Hello there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel and today I've had a quite a busy day. Um, I've just been trying to think about all of the different aspects of what is going on that I can help you with, that I can um, share information about and you know some few positives that can hopefully get out of this. Not very many I'm afraid. So, um, for those of you who are just passing by, I am Black Bright. Um, if you'd like, you can put the thumbs up, you can put the thumbs down, you can share and you can subscribe. Existing subscribers, thank you for your support. I seem to be getting tongue tied. Um, and new subscribers, thank you for um, subscribing. And today I wanted to talk about escaping from, what did I call it? No escape from your escape. And sometimes we live in a world where we don't even realise we have an escape. We do things by habit. We're on automatic pilot. If we take a cigarette when something bothers us, it's like, you know, we're just having a cigarette. We don't realise it's a form of escape. When we comfort eat, we don't realise that's a form of escape. When we go, you know, excessively to the gym, we don't realise that's a form of escape. And we have a lot of areas where we escape okay so we have the gym we have the cinema we have leisure centers and bowling and when i'm talking about escape i'm talking about when you use these facilities excessively i'm not just talking about those of you who go you know every now and then you have the pubs you have the clubs you have football you have football fanatics and you have bars and you have restaurants and you have shows and you have parks and you have the beaches. Now, all of these places are escape, you know, somewhere where you can get to wind down, you know, from a hard, heavy day. And you don't realise that they are forms of escape. You just think to yourself, oh, look, you know, I'm going to go down to the pub for, you know, a couple of hours. You know, I'm going to go out tonight, spend some the night with some friend. I'm going to go out dancing and you know, it's all forms of escape, escaping from normally yourself. But sometimes it's just your situation, your environment, you know, it's boring. You haven't really got much that you're doing. And so these things kind of fill a little gap in your life. But what do you do when there's no escape from your escape? That's the title of this video. Um... So I put here, what has been your escape without you realising it? All escape routes are effectively closed with immediate effect. How does that make you feel? You know, when you cannot escape and you want to escape, do you know what that does to your psyche? It makes you feel trapped. And do you know what a trapped animal behaves like? Have you ever seen a trapped animal? Not a very nice picture. So, when we are, when all of our escapes are being taken away, and that will be slowly because for now, you've got a little supply. You've probably got enough supply of cigarettes, hopefully for three to six months. If you need them for a year and you haven't got them for a year, Problems will start happening after they run out. So as long as you've got your supplies and you can, you know, live comfortably and, you know, relatively, um, what's the word? Not shrewdly. Um, I can't think of the word now. But, you know, you kind of conserve what you have and you're just going along your merry way and you're not too worried because you've got enough. You're not going to feel trapped. It's at that point where things start running out. And you have no escape. So, what I put here, what happens when you run out of cigarettes and alcohol? What happens when you run out of supplies? What happens when you run out of money? What happens when everything you thought was stable is now cracking? The ground is moving from beneath your feet. You've had insufficient preparation. You've had insufficient time to prepare. The assumption is life would always continue the way it has been continuing. And that is what people believe. You know, when they see each day coming, it's almost like, oh, 
the um oh i'm gonna do that next week oh i'm gonna do that tomorrow i'm gonna do that in three months time that's how people plan that's how people view the world you know with holidays oh i'm going to italy next year no no kind of if no buts and you could really say that they're speaking on faith you know they just believe it's going to happen and therefore it happens but i believe that you should always have a contingency plan i don't want to i don't want to believe that i'm negative but maybe it's because i've never had it good or anything I've had good has always been taken away. So maybe for me, I always think that everything is temporary. I always think happiness is temporary. I think stability is temporary. And for me, I think everything has its season. So for me, I, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, it's not going to last. How I feel this moment of, you know, satisfaction or fulfillment or it's not going to last. Something's going to happen to spoil it. So that could be perceived as negative. But on the positive, it means that I don't have those high expectations for happiness, for fulfillment, for being settled, for being stable. I don't expect it. So therefore, when it doesn't happen and when things happen like this, I'm more or less thinking to myself, well, I knew it wouldn't I knew that this phase wouldn't continue because everything has a season. It's just that people don't think it's going to affect them. And I think that is the problem. And I think it has been the problem because when you listen to people speak, like um if I was to say to any of my colleagues at work, you know, maybe two weeks ago. I could have said to them, look, you know, you really helped to start preparing. And, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of my colleagues have said, I did say, you know, things are looking a bit dodgy. Do you think you should start piling? Ah, oh, no, it's a load of hype. Well, you, I ain't worried. I don't know what everybody's worried about. What's everybody kind of all this bloody fuss, all this nonsense? I can't. Now, look at them. And these are the people who are not going to have access to their escape these same people so i mean on the one hand these videos are good because i mean not everybody watches them of course but it does give you a little idea and i'm not saying i'm a connoisseur of any information but what i do do i do i don't know if i've got an instinctive eye but information just happens to pass my eye. I'm not looking for it half the time. Sometimes, like the video I did earlier about the 300 um, detainees, I've got one of those apps that give me an update on the news. And then sometimes if, it, if it's about immigration, normally if it's about immigration, it kind of catches my eye. And I think, hmm, let me have a look at that. So it's just like information happens to um, catch my eye and then I'll investigate or research it further and then I'll do a video on it. So I'm not always privy to all different types of information, but I seem to be privy somehow to relevant information. And so I, I kind of, and I, then when I get it, I share it with you, of course, and some of the info or some of the stuff I talk about is useful for you and some of it isn't useful and you kind of pick and choose what is relevant to you or what's useful for you and what isn't so where am i going with this i'm going with this is that what are you going to do when your forms of escape are no longer there how are you going to cope like i said in an earlier video i was talking about partnerships then and sometimes you can offload on your partner but what about single people who don't have partners how do they cope with what is going on well like i said you know it's the best time for self-development when you think about people in prison they they end up coming out as doctors and all sorts they get phds 
how they go and watch videos that they're interested in they they read books and you know then you've got so many different forms of education for those who can't read you've got the videos for those who love to read you've got the text you've got the newspapers you've got articles you've got thesis you've got abstracts you've got everything that you need and with anybody else um you know there is always something those who like to feel or you know they, they like the sense of touch and taste or whatever it is and the people who like to bake or you know that is what you're going to have to do peeps otherwise you're going to go crazy if you keep having a mind of lack i don't have i can't get i don't have Oh, this is running out. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, my God. If you have a mind of lack, you're going to start scrambling. You're going to start kicking off. So, if you think of the worst case scenario, think of six months. Think of six months, not three months. Think of six months. If you have bread, Take, you know, a lot of people freeze their bread. What you can do is take up two or three slices, wrap it up in cling film, separate the loaves and put them in packets and put them in the freezer. You know, if this jumper is irritating me, if you have um, any kind of food, don't just, if you buy extra chicken, don't just put the whole bag of chicken in the fridge, in the freezer. Break it up in portions and not large portions that you would normally use, but smaller portions. Condition yourself to eat less. At this time, it's not the time to eat luxuries. And like I said, you can treat yourself to a luxury a week. Like if it's a bar of chocolate, just have a cube and just relish that cube. And then, oh God, Evan, I can't wait till next week to have another piece of chocolate. You know. It treat, you know, and if you do that, if you keep things in portions, small portions, and say, you know, so that you've got it sorted out what you have. When you're going to the shop, don't just go to these big shops. They have little small shops, and I know some of them are trying to rip you off, but they are being reported, so it'd be less and less. Just by small amounts, you know, every day. And, you know, you don't have to be manic. I mean, all of this queuing up for miles is absolutely ridiculous. By the time the last one gets in there, there's nothing on the shelves. Then that causes resentment and it causes upset. And you've put, your, you've put yourself in that position. You're going to blame the coronavirus. You're going to blame the, the country. You're going to blame a lot of people. But you... Have put yourself in that position because of lack of preparation. Now this has been going on. Now you, we have to consider that we might have a couple more weeks. Well, we don't even know, do we? we? Might have a couple more weeks before they really shut down. So instead of going crazy, just pick up a little bit here and there. Every mickle make a muckle. That means every little bit you have. You can accumulate it and it builds up. They also say slow and steady wins the race. You know, you just get in little, you just get little bits as you need them. And even if you don't need them, you just get your little bits and pieces. And then you won't be in a panic. So all I'm saying to you is there isn't going to be an escape for a lot of people. So it's about facing your fears. What is it? that you're afraid of who is it that you're afraid of and why and just try to talk to people you know talk to your um your family members talk to your neighbors you know my neighbor honestly i couldn't believe it she said i mean we hardly talk i mean we do well i shouldn't say we hardly talk if we bump into each other We'll say hi or whatever, you know, and, you know, the other day she, well, not the other day, but last year she said, do you want me to do your garden for you? Because I, I am not a garden person. 
But this morning she sent me a text and she said, look, I'm going down to Tesco. Do you want me to pick you up anything? And I thought, how nice is that? How nice is that? They could have gone. I wouldn't have known where they were going. And she brought me back kitchen top, kitchen roll and four toilet rolls. How nice is that? So, you know, what I'm finding is that this coronavirus is making people appreciate each other more. It's making people, you know, understand that the needs that they thought were important are no longer important. And it's helping them to treat each other at the moment as human beings in a friendly way. And they are communicating, which is wonderful. So when things start going tits up, it ain't going to be so wonderful, please. So be prepared. And that's all I've got to say. Bye bye.